Good morning. If you are starting your Sunday with us today, then you may be waiting for Super Bowl coverage to begin on NBC. But I do want to thank you so much for watching Eye on New Mexico at this early hour today because I have some great guests. It is February 1st, of course, and February is Black History Month. And I am joined today by New Mexico's Black History Month Festival organizer, Catherine McGill. Hello. Thanks for being here, Catherine. Thanks for having me. And Preston. Prentice Jackson from Intel Corporation. Thank you for being here, Prentice. Thank you, Nicole. And we'll be talking about what's going on this month in New Mexico, uh, what the black community has meant to New Mexico, to Albuquerque, and how you can get involved with uh, some of the business here locally this, this uh, month, and uh, just some other fun events going on as well. Yes. So for, first off, Catherine, we actually talked about this when you guys did the first festival here four, four years ago. This is the four. fourth one, so three yes. years ago was the first time we talked. Yes. How how, is, how have things changed? Well, you know, we've added a lot uh -huh. more things. We have a lot more volunteers, and 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 I, and I guess I should say that that you're more beautiful, and and oh. uh, um, <laughs> and my hair is a little grayer. <laughs> and so we've done a oh, lot of changed. stuff in those years. Um, you know, added great new volunteers like Excellent. Prentice Jackson, and and a whole bunch of people from the community. So that's. Excellent. That's the wonderful thing. Excellent. Catherine, you're a, a musician. Some I people am. may know locally. We'll, we'll, you'll be getting involved in that way uh, this month as well. But mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what brought you to New Mexico originally and how you got involved in the community here. Well, it was 79 degrees below zero in Chicago with the wind chill factor. <laughs> and yeah. so I was like, it's way too cold. I like the warm, and I had gone to school in L.A. And, and had some family ties in New Mexico. And I came here planning to stay two years. 30 years later, I'm still wow. here. Wow. And um, what keeps me here is the wonderful people and all of the, the fantastic things that I get to do. 320 days of sunshine a year doesn't hurt either. No, not yeah. especially when yeah. you're comparing it to Chicago. Exactly. Pren Prentice, how long have you been here? Actually, this is my 10th year here. Okay. Nicole, I was I'm originally from Florida and I was recruited by Intel. Uh, from Orlando. Mm -hmm. I was in the semiconductor industry for 20 years down there and uh, 2005 they reached out to me and um, I had an interesting story because I had an opportunity to go to three other cities and what happened during that process is that I traveled to those cities, spent a lot of time, you know, three days there uh -huh. for each visit um, in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, Dallas, Texas and then also here of course and the thing that stuck out for me and that pulled me here is that the people here, like Catherine said, um, I spent time and it's very warm and inviting. And also my, my, the team that I interviewed with, with Intel, is, they became like my extended family hmm. once I joined the corporation. So that's what pulled me here. Well, that's great to know, and especially since you chose this place over some of the bigger cities you mentioned, uh, which, you know, in some ways, uh, the black community may have been larger, obviously, in, in Dallas, Texas, you mentioned. And, and we're going to talk about that because New Mexico is known for being a multicultural state. Mm -hmm. But it's... Uh, Let's talk about our, are we tri-cultural? You've brought that uh, that word up here, Catherine. Well, I used to see it written mm -hmm. everywhere, and people talked about tri-cultural. And, and truthfully, some of the policies that we still have in place um, indicate that we're tri-cultural, even though we may not say the words any longer. Um, so I, I think we are multicultural. New Mexico is mm -hmm. founded on the principles of multiculturalism, and that's really the end game for the New Mexico Black History Organizing Committee is to promote multicultural and have mm -hmm. everybody be included. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. Do you think that things have changed over the 30 years you've been here? Um, certainly they've changed. Um, you know, as we, as we grow older, things change. But systems kind of mm -hmm. perpetuate themselves. And so what we're really about is like getting at systems change. And that's what um, the work that we're doing in terms of uh, bringing awareness about African-American culture and really being equal players at the table is what we would like to see happen. Absolutely. Yeah. How did you and Prentice uh, start working together professionally and kind of b both on New Mexico Black History Month well, and, and beyond? Yeah. Uh, Catherine and I met mm -hmm. four years ago at a networking event, mm -hmm. a, a local African-American networking event. Uh, last year was the first year um, Kathy and I discussed uh, the STEM festival, and uh, as Catherine mentioned, this was a component that they, ad they added last year to the Black History Month. This is an opportunity for us, uh, Intel, to to really tie in because yeah. STEM is uh, and that's science, you, technology, science, yeah. mm -hmm. science, technology, math, 
engineering. And engineering. Mm -hmm. the, those are the, that's what we, we're here for. Uh, we've had a strong presence in the community here in Albuquerque for uh, STEM and supporting education, STEM education. Mm -hmm. And this event was a win-win for us. It, it was part of our core values at Intel and also it also allows us to create a diverse pipeline feed a diverse pipeline of sparking at interest in students of all denominations and all races to get interested in STEM. STEM. Yeah, yeah, that, and uh, that is so important um, to, to foster that education that, and, and science is. and tech education. We're always talking about companies trying to attract big companies to New Mexico and they can't find that qualified workforce they need. Intel, of course, still one of the biggest companies we have here. Yes. And, and they've stayed. They they feel that they are still bringing in qualified people here in New Mexico. I mean, obviously, Intel's very invested in this community and, and making sure that they continue to foster that workforce. Yes, is that right? we are. We we want people uh -huh. from the New Mexico area, and we are invested here. We've been last year. We've been here over 30 years, 35 years. Wow. And we're committed. Um, that's one of the things that we're quite proud of at Intel. We have nearly 40% of our employee base that volunteers in the community. Wow. And they, that is uh, critical for us because we, you know, from this relationship that we have with the Black History Month Committee to other relationships that we've had, we are here. We want to be, uh, we're, we are part of the community. This is where we live and this is where we're giving back. So we want to create that environment where students that mm -hmm. come, go to elementary sure. school here, they go to college, college here, here and yeah. then they stay and they, Work for Intel, of course. Uh, so we want to yeah. create that that pipe, that feed loop, the pipeline, yeah. and and really stay have that that homegrown talent, yeah. as well as other talent that we bring in from all over um, the the U.S. and the world. Excellent. Well, staying on that topic of education for a second, for some of us, New Mex uh, Black History Month in general is something we learned about first in school. I know that's where mm -hmm. I would have known about it back right, in the right. day, of February. Black History Month is the time when students learn about that mm -hmm. portion of Amer really what is American history, of exactly. course. And, and so, well, let's talk a little bit about the importance of having a Black History Month, a month devoted to this in general, and then specifically in New Mexico. Well, I think that because we're such a small percentage of the population mm -hmm. in New Mexico, yeah. that perhaps some of the, the history gets lost and people don't have a sense of community or a sense of place if, if you're black in New Mexico. Yeah. Um, so it's important for us to both represent ourselves and to you know celebrate ourselves and, and also to celebrate with other people um, the the culture and it's it, in schools it's important to learn those things and and to understand as you said that black history is american history and and i want to point out that one of the things that is a benefit of having something like this is in developing community when i met prentice at that networking event mm -hmm. and I saw him there and I saw that he was in a powerful position at, at Intel. Of course I started stalking him. Yeah. I was like, oh, you gotta come and work with us. And so then we start to develop this, you know, extended community that branches out and has all these ripple effects in community. And and ultimately it helps everybody. When the black community is strong, um, it, it, it helps the entire fabric of the state of New Mexico. So we're building and strengthening our community from the inside out is what we like to say. And as we work to understand uh, other cultures and people work to understand our culture, I think that's really important. So we're going to get into some specific things that are happening that people can take advantage of to yes. learn about right. your culture, mm -hmm. uh, to, to learn about the community, to learn about black-owned businesses here. A right. lot of things happening this month. But let's, um, I, I want to talk about one of the reasons that this month might be unique uh, as we celebrate this throughout the country mm -hmm. is because we've had this talk nationwide about a racial divide again. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't know that it's ever been not talked about it mm -hmm. and never really been gone, but uh, of course with the incidents in Ferguson, Missouri, right. um, the police situation there, uh, there, there is this tension. The, the president is talking about it. The high, obviously mm -hmm. the highest profile people are talking about mm -hmm. a racial divide. Uh, what, what does that mean uh, for this f month? Uh, wh what can we do to kind of ad advance the conversation and, um, you know, find some way to eliminate maybe some of the, the, the divide? Is it me first? Or yeah, either, either one. Please well, weigh, I, weigh in on this. I, 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 it's, it's a very uh, interesting discussion. Yeah. I think what ha needs to happen is that we need to continue the dialogue and really push these events and how it ties into the Black History Month is that this is a, a perfect opportunity for inclusion, 
because uh, I think so many times people don't have an understanding of the different cultures, mm -hmm. and that creates these walls and barriers. So we at Intel, we, pr we promote inclusion in the workplace. We want everyone to feel like they can bring their full selves to work, whether you're African American, Native American, Hispanic, you know, mm -hmm. LGBT, we, we are about inclusion at work. So mm -hmm. this event and this month highlights the, the different things that the African American community has to offer, but it also extends an opportunity like, you know, we want everybody to come out. Mm -hmm. This is not just an African American event. This is an opportunity for us to capitalize on building those, building a stronger sense of community yeah. and breaking down those walls that have you know, that are there that, that prevent us from, from inclusion. So, that, and, and that's a great point. I mean, and, and you may see this in your, your workplace, and, and you, you're saying you want to see this community wide where we don't necessarily see a black event, right. a Hispanic mm -hmm. event, right. a, a white event. Right. right. We want to see people going to all the same, yeah, exactly. same events say, and sharing in what the Albuquerque community has to offer or the New Mexico as a whole, yeah. And I think in terms of the product itself, the events that we're doing themselves, I think Duke Ellington said that there's two kinds of music, there's good and bad. <laughs> and so I hope that our events are good mm -hmm. and that just on the face and the surface of them that people want to come because they're going to have a great time. But then they're also going to learn something. So it's like arts in, in invoking civic dialogues. And we, we have an event that, that talks about uh, race where we might not be able to sit and have a conversation about it, but if you watch it on the stage and people are talking about, here's some issues that maybe you want to go home and talk about, mm -hmm. or maybe you would like to then uh, be more comfortable in terms of walking up to me and saying, hey, Kathy, would you like to go have coffee? And I probably would say yes. Yeah. You know? and, but, but maybe you might not feel comfortable had you not been to some of the things that we've done. I see. And so it's a way in for yeah, people. That's a and great it, point. It's a way in and it's a way out for us. You know? that, well, that, that's a great point. I think you're probably right that most people wouldn't, without having had any sort of uh, icebreaker or, mm -hmm. or, or maybe a, an event sort mm -hmm. of defining that context, most people wouldn't feel comfortable coming up to you and saying, can I just talk about race with you right. necessarily? Right. Uh, it's, it's, and, and, but that is a conversation that it sounds like you, you want, you're willing to have, you want to have. Yeah. Most definitely. Uh -huh. I mean, I think that we don't, you know, sometimes I want to talk about you know what came TV on TV shows, last yeah. night. You know, <laughs> and um, and sometimes I want to I, I want to talk about important things, but I think it's the realization that that we are we have more things in common than we have differences. Mm. And if we could understand that and uh, do a little bit more interaction in a positive way, then it would help to diffuse some of the negative things. Mm. Prentice, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that the inclusion is the, the key uh, when, when we talk about the, the, the tension in race relations. I think that, you know, as, as I've had the opportunity in, in my, my job at Intel, I'm the, the program manager for the employee resource groups or the affinity groups. So we have 27 different types of groups, um, and they span um, ethnicity, they span faith-based, they've mm -hmm. spanned all of the major groups. And that's one of the things as I see as I go across the different uh, groups in the, across the, the United States. Um, I travel different sites and, and we have Intel sponsors different events that are about inclusion and about, about bringing mm -hmm. the best talent to Intel. And I've had the opportunity to see that, that like Catherine was saying, there's, so more, there's much more similarity than there are differences. And we need to take those opportunities mm. to, to connect. And, and you know, one of the things that's great and, and that has been my experience here in Albuquerque is that you know, went through the, the Black History Month Committee and other uh, events, I've expanded my community. Mm. And, and yeah. that's, that's especially like Catherine had mentioned, is the smaller demographic here for African Americans. Yes. You need to have that support system. We are about relationships. We, we, we like relationships. Amen. We like community. Amen. And being able to connect with the Black History Month and being able to connect with other, you know, the churches and other aspects mm -hmm. of the community and doing different things in the community gives, gives me a stronger sense of I belong here. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that's what we're creating through the festival and that's what we're creating at our workplace in Intel. We really want to make sure that everyone feels like that their value, their input, their thoughts, and everything at every dimension of them is valued in the workplace. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to stay on this same topic with Apprentice Jackson and Catherine McGill when we come back. Stay with us. 
Thank you for staying with us this morning for Eye on New Mexico. Once again, we're talking about February National and New Mexico Black History Month. I'm talking with Catherine McGill, one of the organizers, okay. and Prentice Jackson from Intel, also participating in this year's events. Thank you both for being here today. It's the fourth annual New yes. Mexico Black History Festival. Yes. And stay with us because we're going to be talking about some of the events going on, uh, some really great opportunities to meet new people, uh, to get out, maybe engage with some new businesses here. Here's a look at the website. Uh, it's simple NM Black History Month. Month .com. And then blackhistorymonth.com, and we'll link to that on kob.com as well. A lot of different uh, events going on for different weeks here, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But, uh, Catherine, before we left, we were talking about the black community in New Mexico. Right. It's a small community. Uh, Prentice was saying it's important to connect uh, mm -hmm. for the people who, who do live here. Mm -hmm. um, they want to know that they do have a community. Exactly. Um, black Americans, black New Mexicans want to know that there is a community here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is important. Do you think it's very different living here than it would be in Chicago, where you came from, for example, or as we mentioned, uh, Ferguson, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, some, some areas with larger black populations? I think that it is different in terms of the geography because there's not a sometimes people come and say well where's the black neighborhood because unfortunately in in America there's still like segregated communities sure. where you could say there's the black community in certain, um, yeah. so that doesn't exist here really um, and because it doesn't exist there's it has has skewed towards some sort of fractionalization and factionalization in the community people are sort of spread out all around mm -hmm. so what it means is that you have to create your own community so say you're new coming in you don't know anyone mm -hmm. come here for work um, and and you've been used to being someplace else how do you find your community and understanding that we're not saying that oh I can only talk to black people you know we're not doing that you know what we're saying is that 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 we do have affinities sure, right absolutely. and so you want to find people that look like you um, and and one of the the things that we're doing with New Mexico Black History Organizing Committee is is telling people that there is a community of, of blacks in New Mexico and and we can help you connect to mm -hmm. that community connect to the larger community in in the areas that that you find um, your passion. Yeah. So. And I would think that's important in, in this among the young people here too. Very definitely. Yeah. Um, Sandia Labs at one point had talked to us about the fact that they recruit a lot of, of blacks to come who are very highly educated and working out at, at the labs and they get here and they spend a lot of money training them and then after a couple of years they're just like, you know, we're going to leave. Yeah. There's nothing to do, there's nowhere to go, there are no people, so they don't stay. You know, so it's it's a financial burden for those companies who are recruiting, That's and they and point. people can't find a good community. So so we did something um, in the very first year of the of the the festival is we created an organization called the Young Blacks of Albuquerque. So you know they don't let me go because I'm too old, <laughs> but uh, they have a, a group that you know meets up and and um, this year in the festival they're doing a mixer and oh that's great and, and connecting with the young professionals and and the United Way group and and saying hey we're all here we're all you know twenty somethings and millennials and thirty somethings and getting together to talk about what they think the future of Albuquerque yeah. should be. Oh that's that, that's yeah. excellent, and and it's so important. And, and we talk about making Albuquerque a more vibrant, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. economically mm -hmm. um, and, and and culturally, socially, a more vibrant right. community that people, right. young people, want to live in. Right. And that multiculturalism is big. People mm -hmm. do want that big city feel that right. that they have other other people mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. meet and other other cultures to experience here. Right. Right. Um, so going off of that, let's talk about some of the events because okay. obviously everyone is invited Everybody. to the. The, yep. All the Black History Month right. events here, and um, starting us off here, we have we have food. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and you know that yeah. uh, what's it, it's from Oliver? Uh -huh. They say food, glorious yes. food. Yes. So we have glorious food um, in um, the Taste of Soul Week. We call yeah. it. It's about small business promotion. There's a bunch of events going on. In fact, we have a CNM cooking class later today, um, and I schedule it because. 
what do I know about football? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> but the, but the, <laughs> It'll be a great time. Yeah. Yes. And the class is actually um, sold out. So, oh, um, that's good. So we had a bunch of people who were like me. Um, and then the next day, we're doing a hospitality awards honoring the Padrell family, which mm -hmm. is the first black owned business, uh, restaurant business in Albuquerque back in the 60s. And Everyone so, knows Padrell's Barbecue. And Padrell's yeah. Barbecue. Mm -hmm. And the Padrell family is, yes. is, is, is has a legacy in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, we're honoring them at this awards at Hotel Cascada, uh, that's by invitation and only, but, and then the Young Blacks of Albuquerque Mixer, and then we end the week, uh, end with the Cotton Club Gala, it's the fourth annual Cotton Club Gala that we've actually moved to Expo New Mexico this year, and we have Pepper's Barbecue Catering, and also Q's Cakes, two of our great um, black-owned businesses. And, and then we end the week, actually, with something that is very important to us, with this panel at the Guild called A Place at the Table, because we know that we're talking about food, but let's also talk about the lack of food, because there are a lot of people in New Mexico mm -hmm. who are hungry, mm -hmm. and we know that hunger affects communities of color disproportionately. So we're doing a place at the table screening at the Guild Cinema to talk about food, and for the entire week and, and the following week, we're doing a food drive at all participating churches um, around the city, and you can find out more about that on our website, where people can bring cans of tuna and peanut butter because we are told from the New Mexico Black uh, New Mexico Food Bank Association that tuna and peanut butter is like food bank gold. Really? Okay. Because you yeah. know, they're looking for well, high quality, they want. Yeah, looking uh -huh. for high quality protein. And so we're yeah. we're collecting tuna and peanut butter. Yeah. And just because that's what that's what they want. And I, I we, always appreciate when the agencies tell us what they want us to yes, get. So that's exactly. great. Yeah. So that's what we're doing for them. And so that 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 is going on the whole week. And then we have these discount coupons that you can go to our website and download from about twelve participating black owned restaurants yeah. who said we're participating and we want to give discounts and you get free stuff and discounted prices if you go to those those yeah. establishments during the week. And some of them are I've been here a while some of of them right. are newer, right? Uh, right. So, so it's. I was looking at a few, but you've got Pedrals, which has been here for a long time. Right. Rude Boy Cookies is a newer business, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Nexus Brewery uh, is an up-and-coming business there and brewery. Uh, right. So, so a few Popeyes Chicken, Big Papa's uh, Barbecue, there Peppers, as you said, a lot right. of different restaurants. Cheese cakes, Trinity yeah. Streets. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them, and so go to our website and check them out because that yeah. would be really great. The next weekend is our Arts and Culture Week. We're at the African American Performing Arts Center. We do a main stage theater performance. Performance, and this year we're focusing primarily on our, on our whiz kids and our young people that we feature on the cover of our festival guide. There oh, we are. excellent! <laughs> they're so cute, and um, and so they're they're doing a show at the African American Performing Arts Center, um, and it's a cabaret performance that it does, it's multi generational um, at the African American Performing Arts Center called Respect Yourself, and based on the Tunisian proverb that if you respect yourself, you will get it back, and we really believe that, and that's what we're teaching our kids. And then the final weekend. We have the Mind, Body, and Soul Weekend. Yes. We've got something at CNM, and we also have the STEM Festival Work It Out Day, and Prentice knows a lot about that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, that is free and open to the public yes, as well. Yes. yes. It's on February 21st at Highland High School, and we want you want to have a, a holistic approach to mm -hmm. for our youth and our community mm -hmm. to look at uh, so we combine this is last year was the first year that we did it and it worked out pretty well. We had over 350 students that attended oh, last that's year. Awesome. Uh, and we have a mixture of, of, of physical and health related um, venues and then also, of course, the STEM venue. And this year, we're shooting for 450 uh, participants. And of course, Intel is there. And also, we are partnering with the Kirtland Air Force Base. And Captain Dixon is uh, one of the, the STEM chairs. And I wanted to recognize the, the Air Force's commitment this year in the STEM Festival, and also we, PNM, um, Sandia, all have partnered together in yeah. this community. And what we want to do is, is really create that, that interest in our community for STEM, especially with our kids. Mm -hmm. um, we're starting at 9 a.m. in Highland High School, and we really appreciate the support of Principal Harris there. Um, we got phenomenal support. And it is a, a all-day activity. We are providing a lunch as well. So we want everyone to bring their family out, bring their friends, bring, bring everyone, come out. Uh, we, we have over 20 exhibitors for that That's particular excellent. day. Um, five um, interactive events, uh, venues for the kids. 
Uh, we also will have Intel products, latest, greatest Intel products there <laughs> um, that we'll be highlighting. And also just, it's going to be a, a really great experience oh, for the family. That right. sounds excellent. I, 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 and so I definitely encourage everyone to go to that because that, that again, it's open to the public. Yes. It's free. And we've been talking about how important it is to encourage the science, technology, mm. math, education mm. uh, for yeah. these kids, for young kids. Uh, Catherine, you were going to add on and to I'll that, too. That, that the closing event of the festival this year is the New Mexico's Gospel Bath Singing Competition. So there's no better way to close it than with some really great singing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're at the Highland Theater this year. And that's also a free event. And I want to point out that we have really worked hard to make sure that most of our events are free. Um, this is our gift to the that's community. Wonderful. We only have two ticketed events, and we really work hard to keep those ticket prices very low. And I'll say here in front of you and entire TV land that if there's anybody who wants to go to any Thing that we do. It is our goal and, and, and our um, policy that we will turn no one away. So if you want to go, call us and you can come. That, that, that is excellent. And of course, close to your heart there that last yeah. weekend hitting yeah. home, M music, uh, music is a big part of this yeah. as well. And yeah. obviously for you, Catherine, you're a musician. I am a musician. And I'm an artist and, yes. and I believe that um, I use my voice to make a difference. So. Well, it's it's made a huge difference here. This is the fourth annual New Mexico Black History Festival. Uh, it's a little surprising that it took so long to right. even start this, but uh, right. but it's great to see that this is growing every year and mm -hmm. uh, getting more community support. Yes. I would hope too. Yes. yes. Uh, so ex check it out, February first through the twenty eighth, every day of February. Right. Uh, this is going on. There are events weekdays and weekends right. uh, throughout this. You can download the calendar and look at it at New Mexico at nmblackhistorymonth.com. Is correct. And call us. Yeah, or call them <laughs> and call us at KOB and we'll link you up with Catherine yeah. and Prentice here and the other organizers. Uh, so I want to thank you both for being here this morning, Prentice Jackson and Catherine McGill. Thanks, uh, best thank of luck. I'll be checking out some of these events myself. Thank you. And we'll see you next week for another Eye on New Mexico. Meet the Press is next, then NBC's pregame coverage for Super Bowl 49 begins at 10 a.m. <laughs>